What comes to mind when you think of an invitation? An invitation. If we're honest, some of us would say we have good thoughts, right? But sometimes bad. The immediate worries of finances, like, man, we got invited to another one, and we just went to three, and how are we going to put the money in the envelope, right? Or I mean, whether it's underneath your breath or you sit in front of your whole family, you're like, oh, those people invited us? Like, why? Right? You ever wonder that? You're laughing because you know it's true. <laughs> and maybe there's some invitations that you're just so glad that you received. You know, whether it be the venue or the, oh, the food is good at that place, you know? Um, I had the pleasure of playing in a wedding band for over 22 years. And I have seen the most amazing weddings and venues. The kind you did want to be invited to. Adorned with the most precious flowers and lighting. I mean, there was this one that we went to. It was this white silk tent set up behind, remember back then it was called the Hamilton? Now they call it the Hilton in Itasca there on Thorndale and uh, 290. And man, it was incredible. This big, huge white silk tent. And you walk in and from floor to ceiling, every inch of that tent was filled with different color fabrics, reds and silvers and blacks and candles everywhere. I mean, candles that were like on these, like trees that they picked and cut and like were draping with these ropes, hanging with candles. And I was like, wow, right? Well, this got me thinking. And I did a little bit of uh, research and I'm like, okay, what's like the invitation of all invitations for like wedding venues, right? And the most exclusive wedding invitation today is held at a place that is in Hong Kong, China. And it's at the Four Seasons Hotel. This is what it looks like. Would you like to be invited to that? I know it pixelated a little bit because I don't want to steal copyrighted stuff, but that's the compromise you got to make, okay? So, I mean, can you imagine sitting under that? I'm like, who set up all those lights? Like, how long did it take them to do that, right? And uh, here, take a look at this next slide. I mean, that's pretty cool. Too. Now, go back, go back. That one, too. That's, that's part of the venue, too. So, look, only 60 people are invited to this wedding. $2 million, okay, for the legendary package which includes a number of luxury services, and I quote, every aspect of the wedding is handled by the hotel's wedding planner. It includes the legendary wedding package, which offers a pre-honeymoon weekend for any of the four-season resort in the world, and also a bridal shower sleepover with a nail bar, visit a spa treatment and poolside champagne, but only for 60 people. And four nights in the presidential suite which looks like that. I mean, that's just a bathroom. Imagine what the bedroom looks like. I, I couldn't find one um, with the bedroom that, sometimes when we put these pictures up, can't use all of them because there's copyrights, right? So some of this stuff was promo, so I was able to get it. Can you imagine having this conversation with your spouse? You got the invitation, you're ready to go, okay? And you're there, you're in Hong Kong or whatever. I mean, I'd be like, hon, why even put anything in the envelope? Like, we're going to be offended, you know? And if we're honest, what do we usually do? We try to figure out what they paid for the plate, right? And then maybe if you're, if you're having a good week and, you know, no cars broke down and no surprise finances, right? You put a little extra so there's a gift, okay? So many of us would agree that this wedding would be the invitation of all invitations. Until you turn to your Bible in Matthew chapter 11. If you, could, if you need a Bible, raise your hand. We love holding the precious pages of the scriptures in our hands here. It will not be on the screen because we just feel that there's a lot less distractions when you've got the precious pages of scripture in your, your hand. So hold your finger in Matthew 11. I'm going to set it up a little bit before we get into it, and then we'll go from there. Anyone else need a Bible? Last chance? You need one? Good? I see you going like this. You need a Bible. 
No, you're good? Okay. Oh, you got me. Okay, I see you rolling. Sorry. I'm sorry, bud. Okay. So, this invitation is unlike any other invitation because it becomes the tapestry of somebody who invites from a heart of love and compassion, not from a heart of let's show off. Okay? This invitation comes from the person that we see in Matthew chapter 9 where he says that his heart was filled with compassion and he looked upon them. Here it is, quote from Matthew 9, 36. He saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. So Jesus, the Son of God, who is all-knowing and all-powerful, offers an invitation that is unlike any other. And he knows that no one else can offer what he offers and this is a specific invitation for a specific person. The one that offers this invitation says that there must be some criteria. And I wonder if there's someone here today that has this criteria. Criteria is this. Number one, you must be very tired. Anybody here really tired? Raise your hand. Yeah, I feel you. You must be carrying heavy burdens. Anyone else? Okay, I think we all are. Um, you must be willing to bring your burdens. You don't miss that. You must be in need of rest, and not only physical rest, but rest for your soul. Okay? There's a difference. And you must have, as we learned last week, childlike faith. Remember that? And you must be willing to give up on all the things that weigh you down. And you must be willing to give all that to Christ, to Jesus, to surrender it. So in, instead of letting everyone and everything control you, you must desire to surrender everything to the person that will give you peace and whose burden is easy and light. Now at this time, Jesus is starting to stir things up. You remember that last week? And let's all face it. If there's going to be an invitation, I think we all need to know who the person is that's giving us an invitation. We get invited to all kinds of things in American culture, and we get invited to a new credit card. We get invited to a new lawn service. We get invited to the new mosquito guy that wants to kill all the mosquitoes around, right? Whatever it is. And if you're going to say yes, you need to know who the person is that is inviting these things. So we did you a favor in the first 11 chapters of Matthew. We're calling this study, Jesus, who is he? This is what we got. If we go to the word collage, please. So take a look at that. This is the person that is inviting you with the invitation of all Invitations. You want to know more about this invitation? Yes. Yes. Doesn't sound like it. Yes. You want to know more about this invitation? Yes. All right, we're awake now. Help me out here. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 11. Only three verses today. Beginning in verse 28, Jesus said, and these are amazing words. If you're hurting here today, let these words soak in your soul. There it is. Here's the invitation of all invitations. Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. All right. So look down on your Bibles. Verse 28. Notice the very first word. What is the first word? We're going to say it on the count of three. One, two, three. Yes. Then. Very good. Or some versions say therefore. Does yours say therefore? Come. Come. Right away. Wow. Okay. Cool. All right. So what? Does Jesus mean by then? Well, let's remember really quick what happened before this. 
We know that Jesus performed a lot of miracles to prove that he is who he said he is. We know that he's going around with a sermon that says that the good news about the kingdom of God has come. He was filled with compassion for the people because they were confused and tired. They were harassed and helpless like sheep without the shepherd, as we said. And he knew that the Jews were caught up in traditions. Listen to this now. They were caught up in traditions, laws, and very difficult to follow principles that weighed them down. They also had to deal with the Romans and the Roman soldiers that were ruthless, that were enforcing something called the Pax Romana, Roman peace, right, at all costs, right? So now Jesus has this invitation of all invitations. And this invitation is for those who are struggling financially, the poor. It's for the sick and for the deaf and for the blind, not only physically but spiritually. It's for the sinners and the outcasts. He had an invitation for the depressed, the addicted, the demon-possessed, the confused, the harassed, the helpless and hopeless, people like you and people like me. And he says, here it is, come to me. Come to me. You see that? In verse 28, those are the words you want to underline or make a box around in your, in your Bible. Come to me. Next, take a look at this slide. You see, this is our friend named Mal, okay? Malachi. And he's trying to carry burdens that he didn't even put on his back. If you take a look at that picture, you'll see, you can tell that somebody else put that load on his back and they strapped it down. There's no way someone's going to be able to do that. And sometimes in life, there are people that put a lot of burdens on our backs, if we're all honest, right? That's why I wanted you to see that. Uh, and these people, males representing them, is they're trying to carry the burden of working their way to God. They're trying to carry the burden of religion and not relationship. They're trying to carry the burden that um, they were trying to follow these crazy demands of the religious leaders that were being put on their back. And later on, Jesus, he scolds them in Matthew chapter 23, and he addresses the religious leaders who thought they were wise and he tells them this, it'll be on the screen, quote, to the religious leaders, they crush people with unbearable religious demands and never lift a finger to ease the burden. So their religious leaders and the priests that were around them were more, don't do this, do this, more don't do this, don't do this, and then, ah, you can't do that, ah, you can't do that, like every second, and things that were even made up and outside of the context of the law, which was the word of God. They added to it. And people now are trying to work their way to God. And on top of all that, carry all the life burdens. So now Jesus is basically telling his audience that the Pharisees are hypocrites. Listen to this verse. It won't be on the screen, but the note takers is Jeremiah chapter 17. You'll see this there. It says, Cursed is the man who trusts in man, and blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. End of quote. So Jesus can be trusted because of who he is. And we showed you who he is. Jesus is the one that you can bring your burdens to. And his invitation is for everyone. Take a look now in verse 28 again. Notice he says who? Who is this invitation to? Some or all? All. All of you. This invitation it's for all who need rest for their souls. And you'll see what that means in a minute. I'll, we'll clarify that. Are you tired? Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. This invitation is, no like, is not like any other invitation because it's an invitation that is extended for those who are weary and carrying heavy burdens. Are you carrying heavy burdens? I ask again, come to Jesus. Notice these words in verse 28. We're going to take them one at a time. Very important words. I'm going to take this slow because I know some of you take notes. This is a word study now. Our job is to, to teach you the Bible. 
The very first word is for those that are weary. You see this word on the screen? It's for people that are toiling. They're exhausted. They're worn out mentally, physically, and even spiritually. Those are the weary. We got anyone like that here today? Again, I ask. Yeah. The next, you see the invitation is for those who carry heavy burdens. Take a look at this on the screen. Heavy laden is another word. Right? Somebody laid, all these things that are laid upon you. Heavy laden. Overloaded. Right? Uh, causing someone to feel literally weighted down. Right? All right, now take a look at this last word. And this is a great word here, rest. This is what he offers. He says, I make to rest. I give intermission from labor to refresh, to give rest after the needed task is completed. This word breaks down from the original language here in the Greek. Uh, it's the pause. But it's the pause after precious toil and care. And Jesus says, take my ease. Take my ease, right? Take my rest. Right? which is very encouraging. Now, let's take a look at the next part of the invitation of verse 29. This brings us to our second point. The first one was bring your burdens. I forgot to say that because I cut that little section out. Point one is bring your burdens. Point two is Jesus provides rest for your soul. Jesus provides rest for your soul. So in verse 29, he says, take my yoke upon you. How many people here know what a yoke is? Raise your hand. And not an egg yoke. Okay? Some of us don't know what a yoke is. I didn't know what it was. I had to study. And then he says, let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart. You will find rest. Remember that word. Right? To give information from for your soul. You got to remember the the people that Jesus was talking to were poor country people, okay? When he was talking, he wasn't talking at this particular time in the metro area. He was on the hillside, right? And Jesus was talking to farmers, and farmers know what a yoke is. And a yoke was a wooden frame that was used to insert two animals into so that the farmer can do some work. Take a look at what this looks like on the screen. You got a shot of that. Okay? That's a yoke. A figure eight piece of wood that animals would be inserted into. Now take a look at this next picture. And that's what it looks like when they're ready to go. I put an arrow there to the top so you can see what a yoke looks like. That's the yoke. All right? So the animals, the oxen or donkeys that are under these heavy, exhausted loads, they were burdened. They were burdened. And the farming equipment would get attached in front of them. And the farmer plowing the fields or doing the work or carrying something in a big, huge wagon would be behind them. So Jesus used a common metaphor for the crazy laws, rules, traditions, and the enforcement commonly known as the yoke. Now you know what that means. The Jews were exhausted. We said that. But I want you not to lose um, sight of that. And Jesus, being filled with compassion, says these three words. It'll be on the screen. Quote, take my yoke. Take my yoke. Unlike the yoke of the Pharisees, and we'll see that in verse 30. Because his yoke is easy and it's light. Promise church, we can learn from this. Listen to me now. This is very, very important. A lot of us turn to the wrong things when the burdens of life come. We medicate ourselves with things that try to numb us, but they're never truly taking care of anything. Ever, and they can't. Only Jesus can take those burdens from you and exchange it for a yoke that is easy and light. The burden of all burdens is sin. 
Sin separates us from God. And this is why Jesus says, I can give you rest for your soul. You'll never have rest for your soul if your sin is not dealt with. You will lose your soul if your sin is not dealt with. So the burden of all burdens, again, is sin. And Jesus says, come, take my yoke. So what he's saying is your guilt, your shame, your regress, your remorse, it, it can be taken care of. So he's saying, come, come to me. Are you sick and tired of, of dealing with guilt and shame and doing the things that we know that we ought not be doing, but then just follow up 30 seconds later with all kinds of shame and guilt, whether it be anger or lust or inappropriate behavior? And Jesus is saying, bring your burdens to me. Bring that burden of sin to me. I'll handle it. I'll take care of it. Jesus offers forgiveness, and there's no other way to be saved from your sin except by him. He says, take my yoke. Now take a look at verse 29. He says, take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart. You'll find rest for your souls. So unlike the, the Jewish religious leaders that put these heavy burdens on the people, Jesus' invitation says to them, let me teach you, not them, because they're messing up. And they're teaching you things that you should never be learning because all they're going to do is weigh you down even more. That's what they're going to do. So when you follow Jesus and you learn what he modeled, you'll see that his teachings are filled with love and protection and the provision that no priest or high priest or Pharisee or Sadducee or any other religious leader, even in the American culture, could ever give you because Jesus and only Jesus is the one who can take care of you. But how? How does that happen? No takers, write this down. It's one word, contentment. Contentment. See, Jesus says, I am humble. He's saying there's no pretense. I'm coming with unconditional love. And I'm humble. Some versions say lowly. He's humble because he modeled for us what it looks like to depend on God and not on yourself. Or on things outside of yourself that you think are going to help you, but they're really not. So he always puts others' interests above his own. And even by giving up his own life, that's how far he's willing to take it for you and for me. And he did that on the cross. And he had every reason not to be humble because he is the supreme creator and sustainer of all things because he's God in the flesh. So now look back down on your Bible. You, you see this word for gentle? It, it translates meek. Now, now meek doesn't mean weak. Meekness is practicing strength under control. And Jesus is saying, that's what I'm doing. I'm gentle. I'm humble. Meek. So Jesus' invitation is the invitation of all invitations because Jesus and who he is is the only person that can provide rest for your soul. Listen to this from Psalm 16, 11. If you're distracted, close your eyes and soak this in. You're going to need it. Start in verse 10. For you, O Lord, will not leave my soul among the dead, or allow your Holy One to rot in the grave. Verse 11. You will show me the path of life, granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasures of living with you forevermore. So this is the invitation of all invitations because what he's saying is, my invitation invites you to heaven. To heaven. Eternal life in heaven. So heaven is the place where we will experience rest for our souls. Heaven is the place where I quote Revelation 21, 3 through 4. God's home will be with his people. He will live with them. And they will be his people. And God will be with them. And he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There'll be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. 
All these things are gone forever. So remember that only Jesus can provide rest for your soul. Now let me tell you something. He put a soul in you. So you have it now. But the invitation that Jesus gives is saying, do you want to preserve that and bring it to the most extreme fulfilled level ever in heaven? That's the greatest barren a burden that we can shed. Right? Only our souls, only our souls will never receive rest unless you accept this invitation. You have to accept this invitation. Many of us will say that we've tried all kinds of things and there is no rest for your soul unless you really come to realize that the first step is to say yes to Jesus. And you might not know 99.9% of what it means, but all you need to know is that you need to put your faith in him. That's all you need to know. And it starts there. And in that moment, if you genuinely profess this kind of faith, everything changes. So the good news that Jesus and only Jesus can provide eternal life will give you rest for your soul and your spirit. This happens when our soul's in heaven, the place where saved souls will be, not lost souls. Now, this word for soul translates breath. It's the same word in the Old Testament when God breathed the breath of life into man. And it carries with it the sense of a psyche, right? So look at this on the screen, soul. A person's distinct identity. It's more than your thinking. It's your existence. It's your God-given existence. It's your life, your vitality. And Jesus' invitation of all invitations is the invitation of all invitations because it does not affect only what happens in heaven, but affects what happens right now on earth. There can be rest for your soul even now. And you can come to realize that trials have treasures. They really do. His invitation offers rest for your soul and it offers eternal life, a life filled with purpose and peace and a place to bring your burdens. Now, let's take a look at the last verse, verse 30. He says, for my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Now, we must realize something. There's still a burden. Okay, he's not going to take it away completely. We're not home yet. We're not in heaven. Okay, there's still a burden. But is his burden heavy or is it light? light. Say it again. Is it heavy or light? light? There we go. So this word here, take a look. You'll see that word easy, verse 30. That's the word you're going to want to circle. This is the only kind of easy that Jesus can give. This is what it translates. It'll be on the screen. This is a farming word again. And it relates to the yoke. What he's saying is the animals that get the easy yoke, they don't fight it off. They want it because they know it's going to help them. So what he's saying is it's well-fitting. It's not sliding around and scratching all their fur and then getting down to the bottom of, the, of their hide, right? It's well-fitting. And it carries with it this sense of usefulness. Don't miss this. It's right there. Gentleness, pleasantness, and kindness. That's the kind of yoke that is easy. And that's the kind of yoke that Jesus wants to give you. Anybody in here want that yoke? Yes. Anybody in here want that yoke? Yes. All right. Maybe you're here today and you're just sick and tired of being sick and tired. To you, I would say that if you're tired of every single thing that's going on, I'm tired too sometimes, especially the things going on in this toxic tension world that we live in. If you're tired of the everyday burdens of life, you're not bringing them to Jesus. Can I please encourage you to stop for a minute? 90% of the battle is denial. Stop denying. 
God, I'm sorry. I've been bringing it to the wrong way. And if you're tired of trying to work your way to God with good works, and you finally figured out that you need to accept this invitation, whether it be for the first time or the first time in a long time, accept the invitation, promise church and guests. Accept it. So if you're here and you want to accept this invitation and you're carrying the burdens of anxiety, Jesus says, come. Will you accept? If you're carrying the burden of loneliness, Jesus says, come. If you're carrying the burden of depression and things just are not the way they once were, Jesus says, come. You're dealing with self-talk and low self-esteem, teens and 20s, I'm talking to you now. That burden that you guys carry called social media, posting that perfect picture, the ones without the pimples, the ones where the makeup's got to be perfect, the outfit's got to be right, the lighting's got to be right, better than their post. You should not have to carry that burden. And I think a lot of people in here that are older than you would agree with me. Keeping up on social media is a poisonous thing. It's like eating a candy, car, a candy bar with your favorite chocolate, and all of a sudden, you start bleeding from your mouth because you realize it's only candy-coated razor blades. I'm talking to you, young adults. Listen to me. I see what you guys do. And don't think we don't because you guys always have an excuse. Stop the excuses. I wasn't scrolling. I was just checking something. Bull! Stop! Jesus says, bring those burdens to me. Stop medicating yourself with things that are in an artificial world that nobody else can take care of. And some of you adults that are addicted to Facebook, I'm talking to you too. And I know I'm putting some lemon on wounds. Stop! If you need to, cancel it. It was robbing me. When we planted this church, personal story... I was always checking, how many views do we got? How many likes do we got? Who shared this? It became an idol. How come no one's liking my sermons? Just like you. So I'm not a hypocrite. I went through it too. But I stopped. I deleted all the accounts. I said, I don't care what happens. Because you know what? In Jesus' eyes, he said, you were worth doing this for right there. So now I can't do this. This is between you and God, and this is for everybody. Figure it out. And if it's hijacking you from the rest for your soul, stop it. I'm going to talk on one more thing. Wayne, I'm not going anywhere else on here. Joey, start coming up. The biggest burden in here at Promise Church is this. It's the burden of marriages and blended families. I've cried more tears with people about their marriages and their blended families than anything else in here. Why? Because as I look into the marriages, there are things that are going on where men no longer feel like they can lead. They got the wrong yoke on. They're not going to Jesus. And that Facebook that makes the wives and husbands jealous sometimes, because that's another thing that comes up at least three to five times a week, cancel it. It's so easy. Touch your phone three times, it'll be gone. In 60 days from now, you're going to come up to me and give me a hug that you've never given me before. My job as a shepherd is to take care of your soul. I have to give an account for your soul. And I'm telling you right now, social media will hijack you from rest, from Jesus, whose burden is easy and light, and says, come to me, all of you who are tired and heavy burdened. Get rid of it. Your marriage will go to zero to 60 in five seconds. Instead of sitting on the couch and doing this next to your husband, maybe you guys can have a conversation. Girls, guys, same thing. The TikTok and all that other bull, 
Stop it. Think about what Jesus wants. I've been waiting so long to tell you guys that. I've been waiting so long. And it's all based upon the phone calls that I get at 5.30 in the morning. Pray for me, my marriage is rotten. Why? Because last night, my wife saw something that I commented on some old friend, blah, blah, blah. Or my wife saw something that I commented on somebody who happens to be a female. Well, then delete it. It's so easy. A little bit of leaven affects the whole lump. Call me a, a Pharisee if you wish. But I know men that have deleted it. And their marriage has got way better. Not only for that, but you'll be less bitter. Because you won't be exposed to all the rotten things that people love to post. Jesus says, come to me. Because he's the only one that can handle all your burdens. He's the only one. And he wants you to exchange them for the lighter load. So bring your burdens. Point number one. Number two. Only Jesus can provide rest. Now take a look back down on your Bible. I'm going to read it. We're going to show you who Jesus is. A couple more words that we uh, added today. And the word collagen, and Joey's going to give a benediction from Romans 15. Here it is. Come to me, all of you who are weary and heavy bur- carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. If you made that decision for the first time to come to Jesus today, would you please let us know? It can't just stop there. Because you're going to need help now to understand what it means to keep going. This is called discipleship. It's a very fancy word. It just basically means the process of learning and following who Jesus is. So what word will we add to our word collage today? Take a look at this. You see those in red? Gentle and humble. Gentle and humble. You want to stand for the benediction? You ready? Please stand stand for the benediction. (laughs) This one. I got it. Right there. Yeah. Want to remind them what time? The service is at 6, right? Yeah. Okay. Just so you know, if, if you don't know, it's Joey's first cousin who we lost, okay? And if you're feeling it in your heart to, to join in, uh, the visitation again is from 3 to 8, and uh, Promise Church will be holding a Celebration of Life service at 6 there, right? Um, so Joey, Celia, Lena, Corey, they'd really appreciate that. And we love this family, so why not come out and support them, Okay. All right. Uh, to be honest with um, all of you uh, today, you were speaking about heavy burden. Uh, yesterday, I was carrying a big one this morning. I was so stressed this morning coming here, I had to go sit in the sympathy room oh. because I couldn't think. So this is a big heavy burden that I would really need prayer for. Yeah. Yeah, pray for him. You know, it's, he's young. There are tragic things and hard to process, so absolutely, we will definitely pray for you. Let me pray for you now, and then we'll get to the benediction. Father in heaven, we come before you in the name of Christ. We pray for Joey and the rest of his family, that you would please just be the God of comfort to them, Lord. Help them to know that it's okay when things just don't make sense. And help them also to know that there's no expiration date on mourning or grieving. Help them to go at your pace, Lord, not everybody else's. Give Joey a heavenly hug for us, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, go ahead. Right there. Good right. morning. Good morning. All right. Coming from Romans 15, 5 to 6. May God, who gives this patience and encouragement, help you live in complete harmony with each other, as is fitting for followers of Christ Jesus. And all of you, can join together with one voice, giving praise and glory to God, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Stick around. There is refreshment in the hospitality room. So guests that are here, if you you didn't know that, 
We love to build family here. So stick around, have a coffee, have a donut or something, and get to know someone. God bless you, and thanks for joining us.